All right, how's everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for tuning in to the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? What I want to get into today is watching what your body is conforming into. I know that sounds kind of whack, but let me explain. So <clears throat> most likely, uh, if you're a male or even female, uh, it doesn't matter either way, you, uh, depending on your age, obviously, but your body is constantly changing. You probably know that. Uh, as you get older, things are always changing. Your diets are changing usually. Uh, your lifestyle changes, your sleeping pattern, everything is changing. So what I want you to start paying attention to is obviously what's happening to your body, you know, throughout the years. And if you've watched, uh, you know, athletes, for instance, or even public figures, celebrities, you can tell over the years how their bodies change. Some actually look better, some look shittier, you know what I'm talking about regarding that. But what I'm specifically saying to you is you need to start watching what your body is conforming into because I'm here to tell you kind of the worse it gets uh, or the more out of whack it becomes, the harder it is to get back into shape. Uh, so let's just take, for instance, I'll, t I'll just kind of talk about myself a little bit real quick. So um, I was always obsessed with getting big. If you know anything about me, when I was smaller, I was always the smallest runt. I was the skinniest kid, but I was actually pretty strong or one of the strongest at my size. But I always wanted to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And in which I ended up doing, I had some obsession. I call it reverse anorexism, where you look in the mirror and no matter how big you get, you look small. No matter how strong you get, you feel weak, all these things. But if in this, believe me, if you're listening to my podcast, this has nothing to really do with working out. I want you to know, though, first and foremost, I'm just kind of telling you what I went through. But I realized over the years <clears throat> that I really sometimes I, I was obsessed with paying attention to my body, I should say, where most people aren't. And I'm not saying you have to, again, be overly obsessed. I was always weighing myself, still do. I'm always still looking in the mirror all the time. It's some type of complex I have where I just want to look the best I can at my age. Now I'm middle-aged. What was interesting is between my 20s and 30s and even early 40s, I didn't really care about having a bigger belly. I just wanted to be massive. So my mindset was just being big. And then as time went on, I just started to feel like shit. And that's another thing what I want to include into this. It's not just about how you look. It's how you really feel. No bullshit. And what's interesting with me is as I got older, the um, it wasn't... I actually thinned down. So I went from being like on the average 235 to 245, 250 for 20 years, maybe longer. And then all of a sudden I was just like, I, I got to lose weight. So I kind of was holding 220 for a while and I felt really good. And I did that very slowly, which if you know anything about what I talk about is losing weight as slowly as possible. Uh, even a pound a month, max a pound a week. I don't want your skin to just drop. I don't want to shock your body or your mind. I just want to slowly conform it back. So this took me a while to do. So I got down to 220. I felt really good actually, a lot better than I did before. And then when I dropped down to like 200, I almost felt hollow, like like I was missing something. <laughs> when you're used to having a bigger belly, like 38, but I was like a 54 always coat. I, I wore like 3X to 4X shirts a lot of times. Um. And then when I was around 200, I felt pretty good. That was the best I felt. And I said, you know, let me lose some more weight. And as time went on, I got down to about 185. And I all of a sudden fell apart and felt like absolute shit. Even though at this point in time, I was pretty shredded. Even though I held that weight for a long time, when I lost that weight, my skin didn't necessarily really drop. Now as I'm getting older, it's definitely, I have kind of the Arnold Schwarzenegger look, I call it, or whatever, where the skin, I'm not saying I was a bodybuilder, but my, you know, I almost had 20 inch neck, I almost had 20 inch arms. So I expanded everything. Even though I downsized, it didn't look bad then, but now that I'm, even though 200 pounds roughly, between 195 and 200, my skin is dropping and gravity's pulling it down. My neck, especially, not that I have that like chicken neck or whatever you want to call it, but my neck is 16 and a half, where it was basically always, say, you know, 18 to 19, 19 and a half. So what the hell was I talking about real quick there? So um, what was I just saying about uh, losing weight? So yeah, feeling like shit when I got too thin. So I dropped to 185 and my face sunk in, man. I had black circles around my eyes. And like I said, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm pretty damn shredded. And I was... Um, <clears throat> 
just doing a lot more cardio, I was still doing weights, and everybody thought I was sickly, actually, because I could see me losing that much weight. That's a drastic change. And believe me, this was over like a year, year and a half, maybe two years even. But, you know, sometimes people got to realize, too, is you've got to feel good, too. A lot of times, now, that may be the best I ever looked physically, actually. Maybe in my life was when I was like 40-something years old, but I was shredded. And I felt the worse which is kind of crazy. Now, if you fast forward then 10 years, my cousin actually, um, one of my cousins had some kidney issues and uh, she needed kidney. So I wanted to do it for her. So I went in ultra test mode, ultra health mode to try to be as healthy as I can to donate my kidney for her. So really for like up to maybe four or five months, I just ate unbelievably well, got shredded, uh, I, I really was probably in some of the best shape of my life, especially at my age. And this was like a little later than my late 40, mid 40s. And um, I tested off the chart. I went to Northwestern. They couldn't believe the shape I was in at my age. They couldn't believe all the things. But my family has a history of heart disease on my father's side. Um, my mother ended up having a, uh, I'm not going to get into health conditions. My father's had health conditions. And then what was interesting is after going through everything, you're like, oh, we want to do one more test. They wanted to test my, um, just sometimes my heartbeat would be irregular, I guess, or something. So they sent me, um, what, I forgot to check your blood pressure, uh, like over 24 hours. They sent me a thing that I'd have to wear on my arm for 24 hours. So I said, let me do a Christmas day because you're not supposed to move that much or do anything. And the only thing really I'm thinking on Christmas day you do is open gifts. So I went to my girlfriend's parents' house uh, in Jacksonville to relax for that day. And the thing is when they sent it, the cup that I got, you know how you wrap your arm around something when you're getting your blood pressure done, obviously, or you stick it in a cup either way. It really didn't fit my arm. It was too tight. But I did it in like for every probably 10 minutes it just kept expanding and compressing and up and I said something's got to be wrong sent it in to make a long story short they, they told me I couldn't do it I couldn't donate my kidney I don't know if it was because of my family or whatever but then I, I come to find out it was because of the testing with the, that and then it was interesting because I went for a physical and they stuck a cup on my arm and she stuck it on and it was getting screwed up my own doctor and or one of his nurses and said, hey, you know, that's, this isn't giving me a good read. This is horrible. And she goes, oh my God, I got to get you the bigger arm one thing. So they got me, I guess it's for more people that are obese. So they wrapped my arm up. They're like, you're in great shape. So I asked them when I went through that with that cup, uh, with that other style. And they said, yeah, it was probably too small. So they couldn't get a good read on you. Uh, well, it was all meant to be because my cousin ended up getting a donor and it worked out unbelievably for her. God bless. But, um, Anyways, after that, now let's fast forward a couple years now. I've been eating a lot of Italian food <laughs> again, and I'm not in the shape I was then, but I'm, I still work out four to five days a week, and I'm looking at myself. But it's it's interesting how even at my age, how my body, I could tell, even regardless working out, how it's always changing and evolving, and I think people ignore that. And I'm telling you, please don't ignore that. Look in the mirror, study what's happening with you, and I've mentioned this before, I think, I don't know about women, but men, I think they average gaining a pound from 30 or 35 years old to like 70-ish, a pound a year. And that's the last thing you really kind of want to do because a lot of that weight is being, you know, it's around your stomach and your organs. Most men get it in the belly area, as you could tell. But what, what I always kind of find interesting with men is, is that regardless if they work out or not, in their mid-20s, men just start to look better, I think. They start to fill out more. They almost become more handsome. It's almost like as they age, the aging process works for them for the most part from probably, I think, a lot of times. Could be 20s, mid-20s to like 40s. Could even go to the mid-40s, even up to 50 now if they stay in shape or whatever. And everybody has their own genetics and looks different. So I'm not going to say everyone looks better as they get older. But a lot of men do look better. And I think... Um, that's that's kind of interesting because I think then they're kind of just looking at their face more or less, but their body's kind of falling apart. Or their legs look decent, right? And their arms are okay. It's the belly again. You really got to pay attention to that because the the more out of shape you get, really the harder it is to come back. Not saying it's impossible, but also your skin starts to expand. And your body, I believe, conforms into something that it feels comfortable in, right? And if you have an office job or you're not doing any physical type activities, 
your joints, your tendons, everything, it's not getting the proper blood flow. You need to make sure you try to get as much blood flow as possible. That can include walking, doing stairs. Even if you don't like working out in the gym, uh, you might want to try, you know, it could be swimming, it could be playing with your kids, even coaching them, doing anything to get some type of physical activity. Stand as much as you can. I talk about that in my podcast and my workout videos. Is As I got older, the more I work out, the more I do, especially with weights, I stand more. I stop doing you know, a lot of sit down exercise. It's not stand, sit, stand, sit. It's more stand. Some things like doing bench, obviously, and things you have to lay down or sit to do. Uh, but I don't also use the backrest. But back to really studying your body. Now, if you have old pictures of yourself, kind of go back and look at them. And sometimes you'd be, you'd be like, wow, I look great here. You could probably get back to there a lot more or a lot quicker than you think you can. It's just you got to kind of set your mind. I call, I call it Michelangeloing. But if you really want to start getting a certain type of body, you've got to understand what you need to put in your brain is figuring out how to get that body, obviously, but putting that image in your head, okay? Because there's probably somebody, in, if you work out, there's somebody in the gym that has similar genetics to you that looks great and you wouldn't mind looking like them. Discuss that with them. Ask them what their diet, their sleeping patterns, their workout routines are. Do they do yoga? Whatever they do. Now, say you don't work out in the gym, but there's somebody you know. It could be even a celebrity. It could be a dude who, it could be whoever. And again, it could be a dancer. I don't care who it is. It could be a gymnast for all I know. Um, at least you have an idea of what you want to look like, right? But try, and I tell people to match up your genetics a little bit. If you think you're going to look like LeBron James and you're only 5'10", most likely you're not, right? I mean, it makes sense because he's 6'10", or whatever he is, and you're 5'8", hypothetically. Not saying you can't look like a smaller version of him, but even from a genetic standpoint, you really got to be realistic sometimes, a lot of people, because a lot of people quit because they're not getting the results they want. Got to look at your body and say, okay, this is what I was given. Let me see where my strengths are, kind of where my weaknesses are, but really concentrate on your strengths, man, because you could sit all, like I used to worry about my weaknesses all the time, which I was really, really fortunate. My, my weaknesses get dominated by my uh, strengths. So my arm, I'm very fortunate. I had much bigger tries than buys. I was always worried about my buys, but the truth is the try is three quarters of your arm. My try would just dwarf it. What's interesting is my my uh, quads are pretty massive compared to most. So my hams aren't as big, right? But when you look at my leg, again, from an image standpoint, you're just looking at all quads. So same with I got wide shoulders. I was fortunate with a big chest and a decent back. Some of my friends, I felt horrible. They'd have horrible chests. No matter how much chest they do, it's flat. No matter how, you know, they got decent buys, no try. Their legs, some of them just were born with horrible legs. I feel bad. Some not. But you got to work with what you got. You're going to get the best results on your dominant you know, strengths. Let's put it that way. Because those are usually going to grow or those are where you're going to build strength in. Don't get obsessed with your weaknesses. And that's just something I talk about all the time. But back to you, watching your body conform. If it's going backwards <laughs> or you're getting too heavy, especially at a younger age, and you're allowing yourself to keep, you know, buying clothes that kind of keep. Here's the thing. Here's one regulator, regardless if you work out or not. And I talk about this in my Mastering Self-Confidence program where I try to help men with fashion, hygiene, and fitness and things. Your closet, your clothes is a dictator a lot of times of the type of shape you're in. If you keep having to expand your waist size and not, it's, it's, it's a signal, right? If you were 32 in a year, you're 33. A year later, you're 34, you're 35, right? But your upper body's not changing. There's a heads up there, right? It's not like saying you went from a small, like you're a medium or a large to an XL to a double. Now, if, you, if your waist, if your pants, for instance, are the one thing that keeps growing, obviously, you're getting heavy. You're getting fat. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Pay attention to that, okay? And one of the tricks I do is, uh, if you want to lose weight is obviously do not let yourself grow out of a certain pant size. You have to start learning to go backwards now and you're going to have to spend money. Same with a shirt. You want to lose weight, right? 
start buying shirts that are one size smaller because it may be tight. You may look goofy a little bit at the beginning. I mean, don't make it super tight, but you want to start losing weight where that shirt starts to fit you. And then you want to downsize. If you want to get bigger, more muscular, obviously you want to buy a shirt that's a size up from where you're at. And then you want to conform and grow into that. Those are just kind of like mental things that will help push you to either gain or lose weight. Um, but yes, pay attention to your body and really study it. Look at it from all angles too. And I know maybe you don't have a mirror to do that, but even if you go to a mall and you go into any dressing room or you could just go into a Ross, a Steinmart, I don't care if it's a Marshalls, TJ Maxx, and any other clothing store, a lot of them have back mirrors that you can see yourself. Uh, pay attention to your body. Are you starting to get love handles? Are they getting huge? Is your ass getting huge? A lot of people just, it's amazing. They just ignore it and they just pretend like that's not happening. And then as they get older too, especially if they're putting a lot of weight on, they start having problems with their knees or their ankles. I know tons of these people, even my age going on 50. And I'm like, yeah, because you're overweight. You've been heavy. I know for myself when I was heavy, but you've been heavy for 20 years. You know, if you started gaining weight, a lot of people gain weight after they get married. So if you're 20, 25, you get married 25, 30, you started gaining weight at 35, you gain a little more weight before you know it, you've been carrying an extra 25, 30 pounds. I, that takes a toll on your entire body, your ankles, your lower back, everything. And then you're wondering when you're, you know, you're heading into your mid fifties, you're having hip issues or, you know, you're getting maybe an arthritis or you're getting all these different things. You didn't take care of your body. You kind of ignored it. You kind of like take a shower, get dressed and just leave. And that goes for working out too. A lot of people don't work out for health. A lot of times they work out for ego or just kind of to go through the motions. Make sure what you're doing is healthy and you're seeing the results you want to see. Again, you have to pay attention. Don't think it's bad to look in the mirror even when you're working out to see if you're doing it correctly or when you're you know, in the gym looking at yourself. Again, you're not necessarily competing with anybody else, but you really, if you do want to look like somebody else or something, regardless what age they are, you got to kind of look at yourself, look at them and say, yeah, I'm aiming for this. Oh, wow, look, you know, he's, and, and that doesn't mean he's got a six pack and you think you're going to get a six pack necessarily. I mean, you can aim for that, of course. That's going to take dieting and genetics, but just aiming for better abs sometimes. Just being realistic and going, wow, he's got great deep abs. That's what I want to get. I want to start really working on my midsection. You may look and go, wow, my calves, I've been doing legs, but I've been neglecting calves. My calves look on proportion, like when I wear shorts. And again, I'm not digging on you. You could look any way you want to look. But just to, like something to think about is like your neck, your arms, and your calves should all be very close, very similar in size. If one's much smaller or bigger than the other, it starts to look a little out of whack. And I live in Florida where most people are wearing shorts and it blows me away how most people neglect their legs. It's just, it's unbelievable. They look like they have two toothpicks and then they got these big bellies. Even men that are getting older, I'm like you, it almost looks like, I can't even explain it. I call them weeble wobbles. I don't even know if you've been around that, but just somebody who's like a weeble wobble, like they're going to fall over. But you've got to pay attention to all those things if you want to live a long, healthier life. And I, the saying is, it's easy Really in life, I realize, thank God, it's easy to live, you know, when you're healthy or like it's easy to live. What's that saying? It's easy to live healthy. It's hard to live out of shape. It's something like that. And I'm not telling you you have to be in perfect shape. I'm not even saying you have to go to the gym. I'm just saying you have to watch your weight and take care of yourself, right? And that doesn't mean you have to change your diet and all that bullshit. But please pay attention because every year that goes by, um, it's going to be harder because no matter who we are, we're most likely going to die of a few different things. It's going to be in our sleep, which most people dream about doing that, but I don't know if that's going to happen. It's going to be an illness or it's going to be something fatal, right? Or shocking. And it's not going to get easier. As you know, if you look at somebody who's, you know, 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old, you know, so many different things are happening. Your eyes are changing. Your body's changing. You're not as flexible. You're not as fast. Your mind starts changing as well. So just really pay attention to those things. You want to stay as sharp as you can, I think, in your life. Um, and again, that doesn't mean having to go berserk and making everybody nuts around you too, doing whatever you want to do or changing your lifestyle entirely. If you want to do it, God bless you. But it just means really paying attention, right? to your body and your mind and back to how you feel. Make sure a lot of times, I could just speak for myself. So I went through a thing recently this last year and I'm always traveling a ton, but I was traveling, but I can't say it was more, it was more flights 
I was doing a lot of one-offs. Like I could be taking one flight, two flights, up to three flights a day sometimes for certain amounts of time. I'll be taking 12, 13 flights a week sometimes. Then other times I wasn't. I had time off or... Um, but usually I drove a lot and I kind of flew a lot, but it was a different type of balance, but I felt like shit. And I said, wow, is it my age? What is it? What's the one thing that, that I've changed lately more than ever, you know, that I haven't done. And I realized that I got sick of drinking sodas or cranberry juice, orange juice. And I was having like one drink uh, a day. I did this thing where I was drinking a, well, it wasn't even, it was probably a beer every other day. I should say, because uh, my girlfriend's brother-in-law said, hey, have a beer a day, because I was having some issue with my joints from working out so heavy for so many years. He's like, uh, the beer a day helps you, whatever his philosophy was. I said, all right, I'm not a huge beer drinker, but I did like Italian beer when I was in Italy. So I started drinking a beer here and there, and it bloated me. I can't do two, but it started to help. I don't know if it's a placebo or, or if it was bullshit, but it worked. But then I started to have a margarita once in a while, because again, I just got sick of it. And so I was drinking probably three to five drinks a week, maybe. Um, Sometimes, I mean, I don't even think about when I'm drinking, but if I went for Mexican food, you know, I'm going to drink a margarita. But if I was at an Italian restaurant, I have a glass of wine and the next day I may have a beer, something different. I, I was not drinking alcohol by any means to get buzzed. But I think after time, I was thinking that's the one thing that I've been doing is drinking more. So like for this last couple of weeks, I only went to a wedding and I had a couple of drinks, but... I can already tell not drinking how different I feel, how much more energy I have. And it kind of, I found that interesting because when I was, you know, when you're younger and I used to drink because I was raised in the bar nightclub business, I wasn't a heavy drinker. I could probably count on two hands how many times I've been bombed. I'm not going to say one, which is ridiculous, but I've definitely had my uh, days of being blasted a little bit. But I drank, but I always had a drive. Being in my father's business, we had to collect money and drive from all these different locations. And when I first moved to Florida, when I was 18, one of our coworkers got a DUI very quickly, I guess because I was there picking up some of the load. And his life was miserable. Then from there, after that, his he got another DUI in another state. So I was always like, Jesus. So with me being in all of these different cities and states all over North America, the last thing I want to do is get a DUI. Also, I'd hate to have to go back there. And even worse, I don't want to ever hurt anybody in the car. So, and with Uber and Lyfts, I don't think anybody really has excuses. But, um, and some of my closest friends have had DUIs and are still fighting that right now to this day. Because if you know a lot of people, uh, that's what they do. They get DUIs. And people, you know, I always hear people complaining to people about DUIs. Like, how could you be so stupid? And the truth is, a lot of times... You know, you got to realize when you walk in a bar or in a restaurant or whatever, depending on what you ate that day, you know, you're, you're thinking clearly. You don't go out to have a DUI or you're thinking you're going to get one. You have a drink or two or three. And what happens is you just start to not accept or understand that you're half in the bag. You still think you can either handle it or you're in good shape when you're not. It's just a convincing thing. And I think the more you drink and drive like anything else or the more tolerance you build, the more you become, you think, indestructible. But the truth is most people who end up with DUIs have been drinking for the most part, not everyone, for years and kind of getting away with it by the time they get pinched. But like that Uber, I saw a big poster. It said either pay me $15 for Uber or Lyft or pay a lawyer and go through the hassle of like fifteen grand or something like that after everything is said and done with a DUI. I don't know if it's that expensive, but I think it makes a pretty good uh, statement. But again, back to um, pay attention to how you feel. Pay attention that if you do start to feel like shit, go to the doctor too. Um, and that goes for uh, not only physically, so you want to get checkups. And there, there was another weird stat I heard one statistic where most men... Um, I think over 50% don't even go to the doctor anymore until they feel something really drastically go wrong. They don't stick up with, uh, or they don't stick up. They don't keep going for checkups. Uh, A lot of them die of heart attacks, strokes, all these different things because they they just never paid attention to their health. They neglected it. Uh, A lot of things they could have caught, uh, even including cancer, they just wait till, they just wait too long. If you start to feel shitty, don't get too nervous. You know, and if you don't have insurance or whatever, I get, you know, sometimes that happens as well. But if you do have insurance or you can see a doctor, your health is the most important thing in your life. Without your health, you understand you are nothing. And uh, it's not only that, too, like, say, skin can't, if you're starting to see things on your skin, 
because uh, I just had to set up an appointment because I basically moved to Florida when I was 18, but I was coming here my summer 16. And then I lived in California, so I've always been in the sun and I'm bald now and I've always put tons of sun cream, but I'm getting a lot of sunspots on my head. So I immediately got to go in for that because now I'm getting a big one, like a really large one. So um, I got to wear more hats and I always tell people to the dentist, man, don't neglect the dentist in the long run. Pay attention. If you're starting to have teeth issues, try to work out a payment plan. Pay attention because, you know, your teeth are, you know, it's a part of, it's internally in you and it's going, it's, I think it even relates to your heart and everything, but it's close to the brain. But most people I know that neglect their heart, their heart, their teeth, I'm sorry, that neglect their teeth usually always pay a price for it. As time goes on, if a tooth is rotting or you're having teeth issues, it's not going to get any better, right? I mean, the pain may eventually go away, but that may take long periods of time and it always ends up coming back to haunt you. So please try to take care of your teeth. Right, and just overall, you only get one body, man. That's all you get, so you really got to take care of it. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. And if you don't take care of it, you can't expect anybody else to do that for you. But please pay attention to all the signs, right? Really pay attention to them, and understand your your body is like your most prized possession. Don't forget that your mind and your body. That's, you know, that's it. So really. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up there, but yeah, try to take care of yourself and really study your body. I call, I did a podcast that long. Uh, what did I call it? Um, it's regarding like you studying your own specimen, like you're your own thing. You have to, you know, pay attention to, cause it seems like a lot of times we'll take care of possessions. Like if you, my father, for instance, he's got a great car, right? And he's obsessed with his beautiful car, but he doesn't take care of his health nearly as much as the car. And he won't change anything either. He he hates water. He only likes soda or pop. He's not a heavy drinker. He doesn't like to really drink. Hates smoking. All these things. So he gets away with that point of it. But it's funny. Like even a house. He makes sure all the landscaping's done. All these different things. Right? But he's not always attuned to what's going on in his body. Right? So you got to make sure you're attuned first to what's going on with your body. Not just always getting caught up too. And I went through this as a parent. Well, I have two children. One ended up when they were younger. One, my youngest daughter, my oldest daughter, I'm sorry, had a liver transplant. My youngest daughter ended up with diabetes one. Shocking because me and my ex-wife uh, never had any health issues that I know of ever really like this, um, like to that level. And um, I was always more consumed. I still am consumed in their health, more worried about it than my own for uh, for long periods of time, which is understandable. That's drastic. But a lot of you don't have to worry necessarily about a lot of other people's health. Sure, at different times, your wife, your girlfriend, or your kids, or parents. I get it. We're always going to be worrying about other people's health. But you really got to start paying attention to your own health because if you're not healthy, how would you expect to help them? It's kind of like like an airplane. They always say when the oxygen mask thing pops down, you got to put the mask on yourself then you are prepared to help everybody. If you help people and then you don't help yourself, you run out of oxygen, you know, or if you have children and say you run out of air or something happens to you, then everybody fails. You got to look at it like if you're the foundation um, or a big part of the foundation of your, you know, if you help, if you're married, if you help your wife, if you have children, these people depend on you, right? And I don't think a lot of people think that way. Uh, if you have parents, and even if you don't financially, you may not have to financially even worry about certain things or people. It's not even about financial. It's about you just being there for them, helping them, uh, spending time with them. That means everything to them, right? And that includes your friends as well. So really start paying attention to your body and your health. You're getting a lot of signals. Some are probably good. Some are bad. Sometimes your body, I'm sure, is telling you, hey, we need more rest. You may neglect it. Or, hey, you're drinking too much uh, or you're exhausted or I don't know what type of medicines you're taking even, you know, pay attention to that and go to your doctor say, hey, this isn't working or that is working. Really stay attuned. All right. All right. I'm going to leave it at that. So, uh, yeah, if you get a chance, you could also check out my YouTube channel. Um, what else do I got? We're on uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter as well. And I have my Mastering Self-Confidence program. Uh, it's to help men really uh, find the woman or women of their dreams, but it's also about just building confidence and uh, just become who you really want to become and be just truly start to conform yourself into having the confidence to be whatever you want to be, really. It really is that simple. So, And it's also about helping you not just, it's not about always conquering fears, just a heads up. 
life isn't just about conquering fears, right? It's life because a lot of things we're not going to conquer. Because a lot of things we just can't. It could be whatever it is. I don't care. But it's it's about learning how to work around certain things to get what you want as well a lot of times. So don't forget that as well. Don't be caught up in life where if someone says, hey, if you're afraid of heights, hypothetically, you got to go jump out of an airplane and conquer that. Or we're going to do this to make sure you're not. Well, you may be afraid of heights. But as long as you can like do certain things hopefully that you still want to do so i use for an example going in an airplane i was definitely afraid of going in airplanes but i used it to my advantage now i can go into an airplane because i kept myself occupied now you may have different fears and there's different ways to work around them and i don't think people realize that a lot of times in their life all right and that could be include talking to women or even getting fit you may have body issues you're embarrassed you're uh, you may even be overly introverted and i understand that or whatever the case may be we could figure out a way to work around things to not make that a disadvantage, make it an advantage, but it doesn't mean we have to be obsessed in overcoming that, if that makes sense. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. All right, take care, and I wish you nothing but the best, and if you're traveling, safe travels.